as the facts are, what we know about most new ventures is that the, the most common outcome is that they fail. And so a, a key issue for entrepreneurs, especially in tough times like this, is how do, you, how do you create a business and how do you create a business model that actually will work? Uh, and interestingly, that's been the subject of my research since uh, about 24 months ago when my now co-author Randy Commissar, who's a venture capital investor at Kleiner Perkins in California, and I set out to figure out how can you really build, build business models that are really going to work. And we've discovered some interesting things. First, we've discovered that there's actually a systematic process that you can use to build a business model. Um, in fact, most things have been done before. There's not all that that's very new. In fact, if you look in the theater industry, I think there are, somebody said, 36 plots that exist in the entire, in the entire history of theater. And uh, every new motion picture, every new play is simply an adaptation of one of those plots. Well, the same is true in business. And so there's always something that's come before you that you can learn from, and we call those analogs and anti-logs. Analogs are things you want to emulate, but anti-logs are things that you see that actually you want to do in a different way. So we think there's a process that begins with analogs and anti-logs. You then answer a bunch of questions based on those analogs and anti-logs, uh, but you end up with some that are unanswered, and that's, that's where the risk really lies in starting a new venture. So what do you do about that? Well, our sense is that you can build a set of hypotheses to test those unanswered questions. We call them leaps of faith. And you then uh, build a little dashboard so you know exactly how you're going to measure the answers to the questions you're asking. And you go out and systematically test them, the most important ones first, question by question, answer by answer, until you have the evidence you need that your plan actually has a good chance of working. So, for example, Max Levchin is the founder of PayPal, but he didn't start with the idea of online payments. And in, in fact, for Max, uh, what became PayPal was actually Plan G. So he started with uh, an idea that was Plan A, went through B, C, D, E, and F, and ultimately Plan G, PayPal, is what worked. So there's this process you can go through. There's also a framework we've de developed that lets you think through what it is you're trying to learn in business model terms. Because what happens for so many entrepreneurs is they spend their time filling in the little boxes in the Excel spreadsheets because the business plan software says they have to. But actually, we think you can think more, more systematically and more carefully about the business model and ask yourself really five questions. What's my revenue model? Who's going to buy? How much are they going to pay? Why are they going to buy? When are they going to buy? And so on. Second, what's my gross margin model? How big is the spread between what I have to pay for what I sell and what I can get the customer to pay me? Thirdly, what's my operating model? Do I have a lot of day-to-day -day operating costs, as for, for example, many manufacturing companies do because they have to build a plant and all that stuff? Or do I have very little operating costs to support the business um, going forward? Then fourth, what's my working capital model? And of these elements, this is probably the most important one because it drives the timing with which you get cash. And, and to an entrepreneur, cash is king, so you really have to understand cash. If you can, if you can build a working capital model that works, you'll get the customer's cash perhaps up front or at least very quickly after, um, after buying what they buy. So for example, Dow Jones, the publisher of the Wall Street Journal, and and other publishers get their money up front because we buy subscriptions. Well, that's a nice working capital model. On the supplier side, you, you'd ideally like to pay your suppliers after you've already sold what you sell. So again, suppliers will, will give you terms to do that. So you can actually think systematically about the working capital model and how you might build it. And then finally, there's an investment model. And the investment model gives you the cash you need to get started, as well as the cash you're going to need to get to the point where you have cash flow coming in that's enough to cover all your costs, that is break-even cash flow. And that's driven in part by the other four elements of the model. So we believe that if you, if you think carefully about your new business and organize your thinking around the business model in these, in these five ways and follow this process of analogs, anti-logs, leaps of faith, and then testing those leaps of faith with a dashboard, you have a much better chance of building a successful business model and then ultimately a successful business.